Yo, yo, yo. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Isaac. And this is your boy, Bryce. And we are Brothers on Tennis. And folks, we have had such an interesting time this month of March. I'm trying to tell you, March madness it is, but it ain't basketball. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Speak on it. Come on now, Bryce. Man, we went to Indian Wells and we had some uh, fun and some not so fun. Talk, talk to the people, bro. So Indian Wells was cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we we started the the trip off, you know, uh, shooting our videos for you know Rally for Love that we can't wait to put out for you guys to check that out. Also, um, we demoed a new tennis racket that we can't wait to uh, discuss with you. And then, you know how we do, a uh, shout out to City Taste of Tennis and the AYS Sports Marketing. We got out there, did the City Taste of Tennis, interviewed, what was it, 15 yes. different uh, players slash coaches, got those interviews out on Instagram. Then the next day, got over to the Desert Smash uh, and watched some celebs and uh pros play in a charity tournament and later that night at an after party watch robin thick just show all the way out shut it down shut it down <laughs> shut all the way out um <laughs> and then uh we uh our our guy coach jeffrey uh had a tennis clinic on site uh, that we were able to capture a lot of good footage there, and that was awesome. We saw some of you out there, um, some of the followers and, and people that we love to catch up with. Uh, and then we went home and watched it on TV. <laughs> and there you have it, folks. That we did. <laughs> <laughs> and while we'll let you go to our social media and you can see all of the wonderful posts and everything around that, Yes. Um, just know that uh, we at least got to enjoy watching a lot of great tennis on TV. And that is what we will talk about here. Ain't yes. that right, Bryce? That's, that's right. You know, there we go. There we go. So, Bryce, hey, so first and foremost, I know that we haven't actually recorded in a couple of weeks here. So just very, very quickly, we want to give a shout out to um, what was it? Uh, I believe it was Daniil Medvedev won a tournament. Uh, Cam Nori had won a tournament. Uh, uh, Kostiak from Ukraine mm-hmm. won a tournament, as did Donna Vekic. So shout out to you guys for um, the excellent results uh, the week before uh, the, the Indian Wells tournament. We didn't get to give you your flowers then, but wanted to right. definitely give you, give you the flowers right now. Um, but Bryce, yeah, going into Indian Wells, man, they, they had a lot of really, really great um Great matches. Uh, it overall, the people really showed up and showed out. And um, yeah, and basically, we, you know how we do. We typically just kind of tell you who who were the seeds. And 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 on the men's side, we'll start with 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 the men this time. Um, we had Alcaraz as the top seed. We had Cici Paz, Casper Ruud, Taylor Fritz, uh, defending champion. Uh, Daniel Medvedev was five. Rublev six. Rune seven. And Felix was eight. And we won't go through all of the uh, full sixteen. But Bryce. I tell you, man, um, overall, it seemed like, you know, a good there there was still a good number of people that fought their way through the draw. And um, I mean, honestly, if we pick it up in the quarterfinal round, uh, you had matchups like Tommy Paul versus Felix Mm Ojeali-Asim. I mean, you had Fritz versus Fukovic. You had Sinner versus our boy Vavrinka. I mean, just a lot of really, really great matches. You had Medvedev versus Verev. Talk about yes. a crazy, crazy matchup, right? Right. Um, I mean, just just some really, really great tennis, man. So I figure, you know, let's let's just kind of talk from um, maybe the quarterfinals on, which is where we the top one we had Alcaraz versus Felix Ojeali. I seen. Um, he makes it out of that. Carlos does uh, six four six four. Any thoughts mm-hmm. or opinions on that one, bruh? Well, of these young guns, right, Alcaraz is king. And he continues to uh, prove that point (laughs) every (laughs) time he plays one of them. So, um, you know, FAA has had a great last 12 months, uh, and his game is solid. But 
Alcaraz just simply have another gear. Right, right. And he shifted up <laughs> and shifted FAA out. So, <laughs> so exactly. there, hey, there's no disrespect in losing to Alcaraz right now. So I, I still think FAA had a good tournament. I absolutely agree with you, brother. 100%. Very, 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 very true. Um, and the quarterfinalist uh, that he ended up eventually playing was uh, Yannick Sinner, who took out the defending champion, Taylor Fritz, uh, 6 4 4 6 6 4. Any thoughts? Um, just once again, um, well, as it relates to Sinner, I think Sinner is a challenging matchup and will continue to be a challenging matchup for Fritz if Fritz isn't 100% on his game. Right. Uh, he he is the perfect anti game to Fritz's game. Right. Um, you know, he has a big serve as well. He's a good returner of serve. He moves well. He has you know flat penetrating ground strokes. Um, just a tough matchup for yeah. Fritz. Um, and then he met Alcaraz. Yeah. <laughs> so right. we know how that story goes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know those two have played a re- I mean some really great matches. Again, you think about that five setter that they played at the US Open 2022 and uh you know Center is just he knows he knows how to play Alcaraz but it's just tough getting over that finish line against him. Um but again, I think they were 2 and 2 going into this particular matchup, but um, mm-hmm. you know, Alcaraz did get him straight sets this time, 7-6, six, 6-3. Six, so pretty 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 solid uh showing, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And so Bryce, if we go down to the other quarterfinal, it was Medvedev actually versus your boy Davidovich Fokina. Now, how about that? Yeah, I, you know, I didn't know if Davidovich, you know, had picked up gardening or something. I hadn't <laughs> hadn't seen him in a minute. Uh, so glad to see he's still out there and pushing. But yeah, Medvedev's the wrong one. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. He is the wrong one. Yes, yes. And I tell you what, the other quarterfinal man, Nori versus Tiafo, and Tiafo yes. actually came out on top. I tell that you. was a good win. That was a right? good win for Tiafo. I was on, I was happy for you. And look, y'all know I love Nori. You know he's the one who pushed um, Lavich out of my my off the varsity squad. Um, <laughs> even though Lavich isn't even on the JV squad anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Cam Nori's been playing some great ball. Um, he's made it to two finals, one of which he actually beat Alcaraz. Um, so that was a good win for Tiafo. Yes, it was. And then Tiafo came against uh, Daniil Medvedev. Talk to us, mm. Bryce. What would what did you think about that particular match? Um, look, I think Tiafo did best he could. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Medvedev is just a beast uh, on on hard courts. And even though Medvedev was complaining about how slow the courts were. They were still hard. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? I mean, uh, so that was the basic issue for Tiafo. <laughs> exactly, man. That's, that was it. So he came out, and, and again, nothing to hang his head on. He lost 7 5, 7 6. So mm-hmm. he did actually take him to, you know, it wasn't like it was a blowout two and three right. or anything like that. So Tiafo should definitely be able to help, hold his head up high and uh, and you know, really, really take some confidence out of this because I feel like he played the right style of tennis against Medvedev. It's just that when you are playing Medvedev, you cannot afford to make any mistakes. You have to execute your plan to perfection. And there were a, a few little cracks here and there, and which and unfortunately for him cost him the match. And let's not forget, coming into this tournament, Medvedev had won the last three hardcore tournaments in a row. That's right. That's right. So he was hot. He was streaking. That's right. He was hot. And so with that hotness, he goes (laughs) into the final against (laughs) Carlos Alcaraz, Alcaraz Mataz. Um, (laughs) And Bryce, I mean, let's talk about that match, bro. I mean... Alcaraz did what Alcaraz does, and so many times, you know, he's like a cat playing with with a mouse. 
<laughs> you know, the, the Vows thinks he got a chance until he just take it to a next level. Exactly. And, and that's what he did on Medvedev. And it was so surprising because of what I just said. Medvedev had won the last three hardcore titles in a row, although not happy with the speed of the surface. Uh, you wouldn't expect for him to go out three and two. Right, right. And that, would, to me, was the most surprising and or shocking. And like I, I was saying to you, I feel like I need to watch the match over again just to fully understand that scoreline. Because mm-hmm. it wasn't that Medvedev was playing bad tennis. Medvedev was doing what Medvedev did to pretty much everybody else before him and through, throughout this three-tournament win that he had. Um, but there's just something about Alcaraz that you just... There's like you said, there's another level. That kid has another level and he took it there. And Medvedev, who is typically the one that is breaking spirits, right. was the one that had his spirit broke. Yeah, I I, I totally agree with you. And, and probably the best news out of all of this is the fact that clearly whatever injury Alcaraz had against Nori mm-hmm. and that final that he lost to Nori is either completely healed or he being like Djokovic, he'll need that muscle uh, <laughs> to win. Right. <laughs> Just apparently he don't need that muscle. No, I think Carlos needs it. And I think he uses that muscle strong. He's like, look. <laughs> <laughs> so with that shout out to Carlitos Alcaraz, Charlie, whatever you want to call him. Yes. Shout out to you for getting it done and winning now being the only person as a teenager to have won both the Miami and Indian Wells titles. Incredible stuff. Making history, man. Yeah, I'm telling you. Crazy. So, folks, before we jump over to the ladies, let's just let's quickly talk through uh, talk about the doubles, because I know, Bryce, yes. you had the, a few few fun uh, pieces in the doubles. Um, and so, of course, we had history made um, on the men's side uh, for the doubles final. Um, you had uh, uh, Kuhoff and Skupski, number one doubles team in the world, uh, versus Bopana and um, and Matthew Ebden. Bryce, yeah. talk to us about that, man. Yeah, Matthew Ebden, you know, friend of the show, just super, super nice guy. I like him a lot. I, I always uh, root for him to win pretty much in doubles. Um, as a matter of fact, in the semifinals, they were playing my other guy, (laughs) Jack Sock. Uh, and what really made the difference is I'm I'm like, oh, I like Bopana. I love Ebden. I love Sock. So come on, (laughs) Ebden and Bopana. Let's go. (laughs) Yes, y'all. Catch it. Catch it. (laughs) (laughs) I am with you, though, my friend. Uh, To me, they deserve to win by taking out the defending champions in Sock and Isner. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, for them to get that done and then to get into the final and be able to take out the number one seed, absolutely. Um, they deserved that win. And, you know, with uh, with Bops, Bopana, he becomes the oldest uh, um, uh, 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 Masters 1000 doubles winner uh, at yes. the age of 43. So how about that? That is awesome. And sure. he he seems like such a nice guy. Absolutely. Agree. Such Agreed. a nice guy. Yes. So congrats to Ebden and Bopana. Yes, sir. And uh, Bryce, jumping over to the ladies' doubles, what can you say about Can't Stop, Won't Stop? Come on now. Man, I know you talk about spirits being broken. (laughs) When people look at the draw, I know they're like, dang, at least let me be on the other side so I got a chance to get to the final. Exactly. Uh, Yeah, they just, all they know how to do is win. Yeah. And folks, we are talking about Krychikova and Sinyakova. Uh, They paraded right on through the draw and went ahead and lifted that Indian Wells title. Um, I mean, just just played some fantastic tennis. I mean, even the former um, number two players in Aoyama and Shibahara, they beat them four and two. So they took them to the bakery. Yeah, that. (laughs) I'm going to leave that one. So, yes, you're correct. (laughs) Um, but no, no, I'm just that. And and Hey, this is something we haven't talked about, Isaac, Mm -hmm. you know, at the rate 
that they are winning titles, including yeah. majors, they are positioning themselves. If they can do this for a, a couple of more years going forward, mm-hmm. they will start to put themselves in historical type numbers. I absolutely agree. I think they can definitely get double digit grand slams for sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, can't stop once. Won't stop duo Karchikova and Sinyakova. Congratulations, ladies. Absolutely. <laughs> and Bryce, jumping on then to the ladies singles. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, again, we had all the all the big names out. So, again, uh, Iga was leading the field. Of course, she is number one in the world. She was there. Uh, you had Big Sab, uh, Australian Open winner, number two. Uh, Pagula was three. Jabur was four. Welcome back, Jabur. We hadn't seen yeah. Owens in a while. Um, Caroline Garcia, five. Coco, six. Uh, Maria Sakari was seven. And we had Kazakina at eight um, as far as the seeds go for the tournament. And Bryce, you know, it was really interesting. We had some some, you know, some folks that kind of fell off and some folks that actually showed up. You had Rana Kanu that made a little bit of a run. She mm-hmm. actually got a few few wins in a row. Um, up until she got to Sviatek and she was like, okay, here's my bakery and you were invited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, and, 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 uh, someone else that, you know, I personally enjoy and follow and I'm very happy to see back out there is, uh, Muhova. Uh, yeah. She made a very nice run, uh, in this tournament. So any thoughts on either of those two, Bryce? Well, Radikanu, I kind of feel like the bar is very low for her right now. Right. Like, when she wins any match, people are like, oh, she bat. <laughs> um, but, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I still look at her overall game and the people she's going to have to go through to mm. to win the biggest titles. And I, I just don't see it right now for her. But, right. you know, she can I, I can see she can be top 20. Yeah, yeah, yep. I, 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 I'm with you. Yeah, I think that she was one of those that the hype train just got a little too far ahead. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, and you know they need to back that thing up. So uh, right. I, think, I think that is happening. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because they get they like, boy, she had a good practice session today. <laughs> um, <all> right. <laughs> but, but anyway, and then Muhova, yeah, I agree with you. You know, she she's got the low budget Ash Barty game. And, um, you know, it's cool because it gives some variety. I mean, because you had Ash, you have Anshabur, you have Muhova. There's not a lot of, even a little bit of a Katie McNally, Mm -hmm. you know. uh, I know that was a stretch. But, you know, there's a whole, there's not a whole bunch of players that have that kind of variety in their game. Right. And um, so it's good to see her back. And I think you were saying it on our IG Live or something, but. Another thing that I like about Mahova, she don't seem scared of nobody either. Mm-mm, mm-mm. She, you know, she go, she'll go out there and put her game against whoever's out there, you know? That's right. That's right. And I absolutely agree with that. She is definitely someone that has that variety. And again, she has that, you know, she, again, is not afraid of anybody. So she will put that game out there. And it is a very, very nice game. So hopefully she can continue to, you know, make improvements and, and work her way up the rankings as uh, as uh, as she should. So right. good good tournament for her. But as we fast forward, of course, to kind of like the semifinals and we talk about, you know, the top half versus the bottom half. So you have a Sviatek versus Rabakina on the top half. And then you've got a Sakri versus Sabalenka on the bottom half. And oh, by the way, Sabalenka did beat Coco Goff to get to that semi mm-hmm. and uh, and actually gave her a bagel in that second set. <laughs> We're not going to talk too much about that one, though. Right, Coco, we, right. we love you. We love you. You know, you know. But anyway, Bryce. <laughs> So bottom up, you've got Sakri versus Sabalenka. Give us your thoughts. Yeah. I mean, you said it best earlier. I mean, <laughs> the, when we see the scenario, we know what's going to happen. Right. Semi-final round, Sakri against player X, you know, Sakri takes the L. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so player X this time happened to be Sabalenka and... Um, you know, I, I, it's just something with those Greek players. Yeah. Her and Cece Paz, I don't know what doesn't allow them to play their best tennis at the most critical moments. Right, right. But the rest of the tour appreciates it. <laughs> that they do. Yeah, the rest of the tour absolutely 
appreciates it. And uh, and like I said, it was a pretty pretty solid beat down too. She beat her two and three. Um, and and that's and I believe they said that Sakri actually had won the previous two matchups. So you know this is Sabalenka getting some revenge now that she's a Grand Slam champion. So hey, there you go. She must have met her by the quarterfinals. <laughs> exactly. We'll have to check the round of those previous, uh, <laughs> previous wins. Exactly. <laughs> and Bryce, what do you think about that whole Rabakana Sviatek semifinal? Uh, now, and, and this was interesting because unfortunately I was traveling at the time and didn't actually yeah. get a chance to see the match. Um, but I did see the score. Uh-huh. And, and I was wondering if the bakery had changed ownership <laughs> because I said, wait a minute, maybe I looked at this wrong, you know? <laughs> and Rebecca is just, she just not one to play with. No, she took her, took her to the, took her to the kitchen and said, here's how we make hoe biscuits here. <laughs> and said, here, I'm going to get you two of them. And there you go. <laughs> and um, I mean, Bryce, it was, again, one of those cases. It was very similar to the matchup that you saw when uh, Iga played uh, Pagula in the uh, United Cup. And she just looked like she was getting uh, she was a bit overwhelmed and she wasn't being given the time that she usually has to execute her style of play in her game. And uh, Rabakina just on the day was like, nah, sis, <laughs> I'm not going to give you that time. I'm not going to let you right. stretch out on me. I'm going to stretch you out. And uh, that's exactly what she did. So it was a very, very impressive uh, victory on her part, for sure. Mm, all right. No, that's, and I'm glad to see Rebecca in a playing well, because I remember seeing her or sitting in on her press conference at the U.S. Open. And it it was kind of sad because she was saying that because she didn't get the points from Wimbledon, it almost feels like when she goes to a tournament, she didn't win Wimbledon because she doesn't have the benefits from a ranking standpoint. Right. Right. She, she got that bank account. She but, got that bank account though. <laughs> but the, um, and so, and I think we saw a little dip from her. Yeah. Afterwards, but I think she's kind of gotten over that. Yes. And um, she's really starting to show up in the later rounds of all these tournaments and win some of these big matches. That's right. And, and speaking of getting over something, uh, so Rebakina met Sabalenka in the finals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I tell you, Bryce, that that again, that's my favorite matchup just because it's all all day, all all the way. Big babe tennis. Right. Um, you know, and it's really at that point about who's going to get that first strike, who's going to stay mentally strong and solid. And 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 to me, it just it, it was just really, really a. A, a wonderful, you know, um, challenge. Um, of course, Rabakna going into that uh, matchup uh, being 4-0, she hadn't beaten Sabalenka to that point. Um, but they always had played very, very, uh, very um, competitive matches. And uh, this one, honestly, was 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 no different. And I will say that with the caveat outside of those last two points in that first set tiebreaker. <laughs> oh. And the only reason I say that is because, again, I think both of the ladies got nervous and they mm-hmm. were like, here, you can have it. And they were like, no, 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 you take it. <laughs> no, 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 girl, don't take it. And, uh, so double faults, a lot of the, like after I think it was like ended up being 10, eight or something like that or, or, or something close. But yeah, around six, six, it was like the double faults started coming in. The errors started coming in. So they definitely didn't play the end of that tiebreaker like they had played that the, the set itself. But overall, man, um, yeah, I think that Rabakina was able to kind of get over that hump. And once she got the first set under her belt, she just kind of let loose. And at that point, Sab was a little, you know, a little down because she understood that she kind of gave it away. She had uh, probably three double faults in that tiebreaker. And you know, you can't afford to have that many double faults when you're playing a tiebreaker. No. But any thoughts from you, bro, as far as Rabakina or Sab or what this even means to them? Well, I I think it further establishes uh, Rabakina and Sabalenka as players to beat on the tour. Uh, yes. I know, you know, Iga gets a lot of the headlines, as she should, because she has like a nine gazillion point lead on number two. But the uh, I think, like you said on our IG Live, Rabakina and Sabalenka are showing that, you know, they are challengers to legitimate challengers. Yes. 
uh, to the throne. So, absolutely, my man. Absolutely. So, shout out Rabakana for lifting the Indian Wells Tier One Championship. Uh, just really a, a, a great tournament for her, and um, you know, just happy that she was able to to get that one under her belt. Right. Yeah. And so, Bryce, we're we're now kind of on to to Miami here. So, you know, the draw has started and, um, you know, it's, it's, we've got another, you know, week and a half of, of good tennis, I believe. Right. I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's, um, you know, the sunshine double is, is, is cool. And I tell you what, the, what I want to see more than anything is I want to see a rematch, rematch, excuse me, of Alcaraz and Medvedev. Yes. In the uh, in the finals, I want to see Medvedev not be able to complain about the speed of the court. <laughs> right, exactly. And yep. and 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 see them go at it. You know, exactly, exactly. And it's possible because they are on opposite sides of the draw, so it is definitely a possibility. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's what I want to see there. Uh, it'll be interesting if we see if Iga pulls out or not because, you know, I don't know if she really has an injury or not. Right. Uh, but if not, it'll be if she does, even if she does pull out, it'll be interesting to see. And it's always interesting on the women's side. Right. Uh, rarely do you have like the same two people showing up in the finals week after week. You mm-hmm. might see that a little more on the men's side, right? but uh, will someone, you know, kind of show out here on the women's side? Will a Pagula or, you know, a Coco Golf or, or here's an interesting thing. If Krychikova and Siniakova are not playing in the doubles because of a potential ish, uh, injury to Siniakova, mm-hmm. and now Krychikova can just focus in on singles. Right, right. She's a dangerous character. Absolutely. Absolutely. To have out there. Yeah, and she's down in Sabalenka's uh uh I think might be the round of 16 they would meet in fact. Oh. Mhm. So yeah, uh she's not somebody I want to meet too early. Yeah. I I I agree with that wholeheartedly. Although I believe she took care of her the last time they played though, so um, but we'll see, because Krychikova, like you said, if she's not focusing on doubles, she might be like, okay, I'm going to swing out on my singles, and we're going to see what happens. And right. you know she likes Iga's game, so there you go. <laughs> I know Iga was happy to see her on the other side. Right? She's like, oh, keep her away from me, please. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, but my yeah, goodness, folks. y'all. So there is some good tennis coming up here with the Miami Open. Um, you know, definitely uh, get out there, watch it, enjoy it. Um, we are definitely, um, although we weren't able to make it this year, we are definitely planning to make it out there next year, barring yes. any, any craziness. So just really, really looking forward to Miami. So definitely support the tournament and uh, and watch those matches because um, they should be good. Yeah, welcome <laughs> to Miami. All right. Come on now. <laughs> Oh, man. So, so, Bryce, I think we covered everything. I think we're pretty, pretty good on this side. Um, any thoughts, anything else that you want to share out there, share to the folks out there? No, I mean, I, I just think there are other people we've kind of got our eye on that we're not really sure how they're going to show up yet. I mean, there's a lot of energy behind like a Ben Shelton. Yes. And depending upon his draw and, you know, what he's able to do. Um you know, Coco, we're still looking for her to take a big one, yeah. you know, yeah. just don't know if it'll happen with the current version of the forehand. Right. Right. That she have. Will Alicia Parks find herself mm-hmm. again, you know, in this tournament? Although I think she at the moment is sort of sizing herself up as a really good indoor player. Mm, OK. Um and um, but, you know, there are a couple of interesting smaller stories to see, you know, if they'll surface here in Miami. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to checking out the tournament and uh, hopefully the matches will be as as fun and competitive as they were at uh, for Indian Wells. I pretty much feel like they will be. Um, and yeah, folks, if you need to get your news and you want to hear about it, come on out for and look at look up Brothers on Tennis. 
we will Absolutely. we will have it. There you go. <laughs> and one other thing, folks, really quickly, um, we are in the running for uh, podcast of the year. Um, so we definitely, definitely want your support. Um, yeah. So please, please, if you will, go to our website, go to our IG, wherever you tune into Brothers on Tennis and uh, definitely look up that uh, information. You will have to create an account, unfortunately, but we ask that you please for us, for the family. <laughs> yes. If, if you could do that and give us a vote, we would greatly appreciate that. Bryce, any other words on that, brother? No, no. I think if a niche media outlet like us can win Best Tennis Podcast, I mean, I I think it says a lot for the diversity and listenership that's out there Yes. uh, right now. I mean, just even the fact that we made the short list um, was was pretty amazing, so... Uh, since we're here, we might as well try to do the damn thing, right? That's what I'm talking about, brother. Might as well. If we're going we to get in, might as well get in and, and win. Right, yeah. So <laughs> we would truly appreciate your vote. And once again, if you go to our bio and Instagram, we have a link right there um, to go vote. So uh, please help the family out if you can. That's right. So With that, Isaac, I think we'll go ahead and wrap this week up, but we'll be back next week to talk more good tennis with you all. So on behalf of the podcast, this has been your boy Bryce. And this is your boy Isaac. And we are Brothers on Tennis. Everyone be well.